Not all that long ago, BMW revived the 8 Series. I'm driving the 840i and I'm going to do a video about it. So let's go. Part of the 8 Series relaunch includes adding a less expensive 6-cylinder to the lineup as well as a 4-door Grand Coupe to the 2-door Coupe and convertible versions. I think I'm going to talk about the engine stuff first. That new inline 6 or the V8 are both turbocharged. The inline 6 in the 840i gets a twin turbo, so does the V8 in the 850. Those numbers in the latter get it from zero to hair on fire in under four seconds. Need something even faster? The M8 high performance version should be more your brand of loco. I wouldn't exactly use the same word for this six cylinder. The power that it gets is decent, but for a car of this caliber, you know, I really am kind of expecting something a little bit more juicy. If I want that, I have to ratchet it up to sport mode. I'm gonna do that, and then, then I start to see the acceleration that I expect. Then you get quicker throttle response and the chassis firms up. But I've gotta be honest, the sticker price on this particular car I'm driving is $100,000. For that kind of cash, I want a little more guts. So the 8 Series is not exactly a shrinking violet. The two-door obviously weighs a little bit less, but this four-door Grand Coupe weighs in at a not-so-spelt 4,500 pounds. Adding BMW's X-Drive four-wheel drive system, which comes standard on V8 850 models, makes that body feel a bit less weighty with added traction putting power down at all four corners. I've got X-Drive in this car that I'm driving, and it does actually help make things a little bit more maneuverable and nimble for all the size. The killer chassis it rides on, the suspension and damping settings, and a finessed and quick-shifting 8-speed automatic transmission make the 8 Series a ton of fun to flog around turns. So stop weaving in and out of traffic when you're on your commute, BMW drivers, and get this thing into some turns. Ooh. Since we're here, let's talk about the interior. So there are a lot of things I want to mention about the BMW's innards, but the first thing that I noticed is this amazing crystal shifter that looks like it's something at the top of Maleficent's staff. It's magical. <laughs> but if it catches the light just right, it throws rainbow prisms into your eyes like a unicorn with its laser gun. Something not so magical? BMW's infotainment system. BMW is not known for an uncomplicated and mega intuitive interface. The screen is 10.25 inches of digital huge and graphics look sharp. There's plenty of customizable tomfoolery over here with the gauge cluster and you get stuff like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Wireless, but that will cost you extra. The buttery leather seats, yes, they look killer, kind of like Spider-Man with this red color, and they're adjustable and heated. After about two hours of driving in them, they get awfully hard and actually make my legs numb. Now, that might be my five foot five inch frame. Uh, I don't know. So it might be something you go check out for yourself. The other thing you might want to go check out is the Kelly Blue Book YouTube channel. Go subscribe. Standard safety features include lane departure warning, frontal collision warning with automatic emergency braking and active blind spot detection. When it comes to those safety features, BMWs feel a little bit intrusive. They're almost more like uh, reprimands than they are warnings. The lane correction assist almost feels like one of those super grabby instructors at a track who yank your steering wheel when you're not doing it right. I'm not really crazy about it. I turned them down to the lowest sensitivity, then just shut them off. They really distracted my driving. But for someone who's driving distracted, they will definitely be effective. The 8 Series Coupe, Convertible, and this Grand Coupe are all four passenger vehicles. Rear seats are more cramped in the Coupe than the four-door version. But even here in the four-door, headroom is not generous. But if you do have some stuff to haul around, you can put both of those back seats down and you get some pretty decent cargo space. If you're wondering whom else makes a similar car, check out the Mercedes-Benz S-Class, Audi A7, Aston Martin DB11, or the Maserati Gran Turismo. They all might be good bets. This BMW is huge, and the Grand Coupe's wheelbase is clearly longer than the two-door version. 
This latest 8 Series iteration checks in as far more contemporary looking than its predecessor. Smooth curves, sculpted sides, standard 20-inch wheels, and BMW's trademark twin kidney grille that's blessedly well proportioned round out what I think is one very handsome car. While this grand touring luxury mobile comes packed with standard equipment, there are good extras. The Driving Assistance Professional Package gets you those overzealous semi-autonomous driving features like adaptive cruise control and an evasion aid. And a comfort seating package adds ventilation to the front seats. The 8 Series Convertible offers a neck warming feature that I think should be in all cars. Full stop. The 840i Grand Coupe starts at around $86,000. For the two-door coupe, you're going to pay a little bit more. That starts around $89,000. Adding xDrive raises those prices by $2,900. The 850i starting prices are over six large. Same with that insane M Coupe. That's a lot of coins. Make sure the purchase is worth them all. So the BMW 8 Series is back, and now you know what I think, but What's most important if you're in the market for buying one of these is what you think. So go check it out.